The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. All the way back at the beginning of digital computing, uh, John von Neumann, who became the father of digital computing with the von Neumann machine, uh, talked about how different machines, manufactured design machines, were compared to living systems as far as how they handled error. That living systems, when they get injured or damaged or something went wrong, they would try to ride it out, keep going, hide as much as possible, heal up later if possible, and so forth. Whereas we design machines so that the first thing that goes wrong, we make it fail as obviously as possible. Never hide uh, mistakes, never hide failures, but instead stop immediately. Why? Because it's hard enough figuring out what's gone wrong with a machine when one thing has gone wrong, and if we keep on trying to go further and now two or three more things go wrong, the chance of us figuring out what was actually the problem become very unlikely. And as a result, the whole idea of serial determinism is motivated, that you know, everything has to be exact right and as soon as anything goes wrong you want to quit well if we're talking about best effort computing if we're talking about giving up on serial determinism that means we're gonna have to fight face a whole new level of bugs where things may be you know going uh, somewhat wrong and in the process of trying to uh, recover from previous problems and continuing to make progress and so on and that's what <clears throat> the last couple of weeks have been about for me uh, um, um, the problem I specifically came up with was, you know, I have all these log files that I've described some of them, I've showed some of them here, uh, <coughs> that uh, give a sequence of events that go on. Uh, um, well, let's just take a look at it, and I'll come back to talking about the sync uh, uh, in a minute. Uh, uh, all right, so here's what my setup tends to start looking like, right? Uh, uh, I've got two machine, uh, two tiles that are connected together here. I got another one that's ready to be connected. It's all powered up and so forth. Uh, um, and you know these guys, and I have Ethernet cables sticking out of all of them. That Ethernet cable has to come out of the west, so there's only so many kinds of grid arrangements you can re you can use if you want to get an Ethernet cable into every tile. Eventually, that's not going to be possible. But right now, I have three, and I end up with with you know having three terminal windows where I'm SSH'd into three tiles simultaneously trying to figure out what's going on. But you know these log files, you know, they're they're really quite simple. They just have sequence numbers, Lex in Lexivited, uh, uh 225, 226, 227. We know what those mean. Uh, um, that say what happened, but that's a single log file on a single machine. And what are we gonna do when in fact we've got something that's necessary? Necessarily involving multiple tiles at once, like intertile events. And so I started building up a new kind of trace file, just like happened with the Linux kernel module, build tracing systems so that we can watch what's going on with relatively little impact on the timing, not just what steps happen, but how long it takes by focusing on making the, the uh, logging reasonably cheap. And that's what I have here. And now we start capturing the actual time that this happened, 6 minutes, 57 seconds, and 444 milliseconds. Uh, uh, from the start of this file, this particular thing happened, and so forth. But now that we've got a separate trace file on multiple tiles, the multiple tiles don't necessarily have a common clock. <sighs> That was the uh, that was the sync issue that I was talking about uh, up here. Sync what you want, but use what you sync. The whole history of you know digital computing and much of the history of of technology has been about building larger zones of control. And one of the examples of it is mapping the Earth and and dividing latitude and longitude, getting time nailed down. All of these things, which were giant uh, scientific and engineering challenges and breakthroughs in uh, centuries past, all, what they were all doing was building larger and larger zones of synchronization. And that's going to happen in the movable feast machine as well. But the important point is the architecture 
the architecture is not supposed to pretend that it can solve all synchronization problems for you. The idea is if you have some local computation that needs a certain amount of synchronization to get its job done, then you build synchronization at that level. But you don't gratuitously synchronize everything uh, up front just to sort of clear the decks because that won't be indefinitely scalable. Sync what you want, but use what you sync. It's from an old Simpsons uh, uh, Treehouse of Horrors episode. Uh, um, this is what's going on here. So now we have multiple tiles that have multiple trace files that are not, we can't assume we have network time protocol running on these things which we don't because you know in the middle of this this glob of tiles there's no network that's a feature that there's no network there uh, so what i did instead is i said okay well all we really need to know we don't need to know absolute time we just need to know the time of relative events if this guy sent a packet and this guy received it we have to line them up so that those points in time match and then the ones in between we can count on the quartz crystals that each tile has remaining relatively close. So I developed an alignment mechanism uh, and the idea was, uh, excuse me, can I have my thing back here? What's going on? There we go. Jeez. What we'll do is we'll take the packets that they send back and forth. We'll take certain ones that are reasonably rare and we'll just put a big random number at the end, you know, 31 bits of randomness at the end of the packet, and we'll see that that, that bits of randomness gets recorded in the trace file of the thing that sent it and the trace file of the tile that received it. And then we can use those points of random numbers. Oh, here's FEAO7, you know, whatever it is uh, that was sent by this tile, and here's that same number, FEAO7, uh, that was received by this other tile, uh, that I can now say these things must have been about out aligned in time, modulo a little bit of delay for the packet to get there, and furthermore that whatever uh, connector I sent this one out must be connected to whatever connector this one arrived on. So by collecting a bunch of these synchronization points, which are just random numbers that got sent between tiles, uh, we can then do statistics on it and try to figure out the offset between what this thing thought the clock was set to, this thing thought the clock was set to, and line them back up. And so there we have this ITC sync process. This is again was in the early days before it actually existed, uh, but you get the idea. And so here's an example of the early days it was setting up. At 40 seconds and 22 milliseconds, a packet was sent out that was an open packet and it had OFF1504. It looks like off, but it's just a hex number. And two milliseconds later, it was received by, it was sent by east, it was received by west. There it is, that same sync number. What is this? This is a loopback cable. East is connected to west on the same tile. Pack it out, pack it in, sync matches. You get the idea. So we go through, we find all these things, we build them in a map, we, we do statistics on uh, the, time the time delays that each sync point implies for the nature, for the beginning of its particular file, and then we average them out, try to get rid of outliers, because it is always possible that we might pick the same random 31 bits more than once. I'm not sure I've ever seen that yet but certainly it's possible in principle. Uh, um, and so here's another example. And this one, look at this. This is uh, number zero, number one. Those are two different tiles. This indentation from tile one is a completely separate trace file that had its own time base that we found sync points in it and we tried to match them up. In B32, A, 20A, B32, 28A, whatever it is. Uh, uh, and that allows us to then see, okay, went out one place, came in another place, and so on. Uh, uh, here's another one. Here's an example of an early version of the trace for an entire event. This is on the loopback cable, but it's an intertile event. The open stage is, is when the uh, two intertile connectors have recognized that they're compatible and they've exchanged caches and everything's all good. And so here's the sync point D29, the other guy has a sync point 2, F327, and so forth. And one guy says, okay, I'm calling you up. I'm ringing your, your number one on your circuit because I would 
would like to do an event at my coordinate 021 uh, relative to east for our event window going out distance 4 and it's even for the yoink bit. Uh, that went out east. Two milliseconds later it was received by west. Uh, west processed it and, and, and answered the call, answered the ring, saying yes you can have it. The answer receives back at east. Talk, 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 talk. That's sending the cache updates corresponding to a western bean in this case actually moving well, one site. So the site where it used to be became empty, the site used to be empty became it. That ends up taking 20, well, it, 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 those packets eventually got merged together. These two talk talks got turned into one longer one, 29 bytes total to have a single thing moving to a different space. Hang up, hang up, that's the end of an event. And it took something like uh, 200 200 milliseconds that's a lot uh, some of them uh, go quite a bit faster than that uh, um, now <clears throat> there was a problem. So I ended up with three files, uh, uh, three tiles that were all connected together, but one of them was actually a reboot of the first tile. So uh, tile zero and tile one overlapped in a trace file, and tile one and tile two overlapped in a trace file, but tile zero and tile one, I'm sorry, tile two and tile zero never actually overlapped because they were the same tile that got rebooted uh, uh, or the engine restarted. And when I actually actually merged those files, it figured it out, it figured out an alignment, but it actually got it slightly wrong. So there's this scary thing that, so northeast le less than means it received, northeast received a shut packet with a 741.64 uh, sync tag on it. And according to the alignment, that sync tag wasn't sent by Southwest uh, until a uh, tenth of a second later or something like that, a third, uh, 30 milliseconds later or something like that. So it screwed up the alignment. And I'm not 100% sure, like I said, wh exactly what's going on, but it is still going to be the case that it doesn't necessarily ac accounts for the intertile, uh, the various lags that go between the things. It tries to average them out going both ways, but it might not come out quite right. So in the end, and this is another one where the uh, the ring goes out at 307 milliseconds and it was received 30 milliseconds before. Hmm, nice work if you can get it. Uh, and so forth. Several of them. So finally uh, I, found, I found a bug, but finally I actually put in a, a tweak map so that if you discover these things, uh, these a-causal a time travel packets going on, uh, you can tweak it at the command line as well just to line it up. Not the most comforting uh, rock solid reliability, but in fact, it seems like it's been no problem in the cases I've looked at. Sync what you need, but use what you sync. So that's the story on that. But the longer story is Bug City. Bug, bug, bug. Uh, uh, here's a, here's, now that it's been fleshed out, the trace file now has a lot more information in it. This is one. Uh, uh, intertile event again, one uh, on the loopback, uh, but in fact this one goes from 629 milliseconds to 663, so it's only about 30 milliseconds long, getting a little better, uh, uh, and so forth. Here is an event uh, on event window 12 using uh, circuit uh, phone number 11 on the ring uh, thing that actually it, it gets interrupted so it sends out the talk packet there's the 29 byte talk packet saying here's my cache update and while it's waiting for that to be received and to be handled and processed it actually does two more events uh, the 1617 guy goes to 15 six, six, 27 and so forth and then the packet arrives at the other other side and it keeps on going. This is the multiple event windows in flight in action. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, all right, but uh, <laughs> having so many failures that I just said, you know, I needed a, a kill screen. I needed something to show that it's without having to look at SSH and boy, it's been blowing up every single possible chance. So uh, let me see. I'm taking up too much time, but let, let's see if I can show it to you here. Uh, all right, um, that's going to take, uh, so we're just booting them up uh, brand new uh, uh, while we're waiting for that. You know, look at this, <laughs> uh, uh, the homepage for the T2 Tile Project. This is a frame grab from another video uh, uh, by the 
uh, contraption collection uh, YouTube channel that's that's run by a, 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 a friend in, uh, in the area uh, um, who actually included uh, a frame grab because he was looking for inspiration from out on YouTube channels and he had a quick montage flashing just a few frames and and, and he stuck in the T2 tile project so that was very nice I'll put a link down there uh, uh, he, he's building ballast scissors you know I don't know there's this flippy knives you know that you can whip around and it does a thing and it's, and it's got handles that turn into the blade cover and so forth he's building one out of scissors uh, uh, that uh, <laughs> will do it it's very cool and he just his channel just blew up he's got 3,000 subscribers now very cool uh, uh, all right uh, um, so uh, we've got here we go so th these guys are connected we've got uh, a loopback cable between southeast on this tile and northwest on this tile let's stick in uh, a bean this is a new kind of bean that goes until it can't seem to turn it can't go make any progress and then oh it did that you see it it, it went out through the loop back and came back in oh here and went over to the other side so this one keeps going straight until it can't make progress forward then it picks a random direction look at that thing go oh yeah there it is there's the teleporter <laughs> yeah. yeah that's exactly what i was going to show you uh, uh, there's all kinds of bugs um there's uh you know coordinate problems transform coordinate problems uh the resources in the event windows that are not getting cleaned up properly and so forth there's a ton still to do uh uh I was, you know, always hoping to have more progress to show you, but I decided, hey, I'm going to show you the bugs. So that's where we're at. Um, that's our bug demo. Uh, uh, next episode is going to be close to the end of June, and the next uh, July is the ALIFE 2020 conference, where I'm still hoping to have not just intertile event work, events working, but the grid you know, like over a hundred tiles all going at once. There's a tremendous amount to do. I'm very scared about that. We'll see how it works out. I hope you're doing all right. Uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to, uh, uh, what I, I want to do to help out with all the stuff that's going on. It feels like a new kind of sink forming uh, uh, bottom up and it can crystallize very rapidly. We'll see what happens. Thanks for being here. Hope to see you next time.